Hello people and welcome to Find Skills Hub here. We learn, we connect, and we grow. Well, in this short video, we are going to explore a very useful feature in Power BI, the ability to forecast future values. So for example, if you have sales data and it is data that is time ordered, that is, it has a series of dates in a certain order, well, you can use Power BI to forecast base case, worst case, and best case scenarios. The good thing is that you can even export your data and then further analyze it in Excel. I'm going to show you all this in a very short story. So if you're game, join me and let's go through this together. So here is a short story on sales and we capture our revenue cost profit for each year in the last two years. This report also shows us our top customer our top product, okay, we are able to drill down based on regional branches. If you want to zoom into the city branches in each region, okay, we can also go down at that level. Okay, so all this possible in this simple Power BI report. Now you realize that in the data set, we have two years shown here by a slicer and I can switch to the last year, which is 2023. Now, my goal is simple. I want to be able to, based on our performance in the last two years, be able to project how we are going to fare in the subsequent years. So that is where we need to focus. Now, to be able to do this, the visual that you use or the data that you are going to use should have a column that has an ordered date series. Okay, so usually if you have something like this, x-axis contains regions, it's not going to be helpful, right? So I'm going to take off the region and city that I've used here. So I'll take off region and city, okay? And in the x-axis, replace this with my date in the calendar table, right? So for a report like this, it's always advisable to create a calendar table. So this dates now will give me all the elements in a date hierarchy my year my quarter my month and my day this probably will be a bit too granular if you want to project if you want to do by day it's possible but i don't really think it's going to be useful so we'll take off the day element right so we have a year quarter and month now usually the visual that is appropriate for forecasting is the line chart right so aside having a time series in one of the axes, you should switch to the line chart. Okay, so I'm switching to the line chart. So this gives me an overview of our performance from January all the way to December. Now, once you have these two conditions in place, that is your time series and your line chart, in the format options, okay, you find the forecast feature or the forecast option over here. Okay, normally if these two conditions are not present, you can find the forecast, right? There are other options to put in a trend line and find anomalies and all that, right? So let's see what we get initially when we click on forecast. So this now projects what is going to happen in 2024. So I have January 2024 all the way to December 2024, right? I can make this a bit bigger by going to focus mode so this is the focus mode this is our historical okay and then you realize that where it ends in december 2023 i'm able to see about 10 points from this point we'll change this later okay so for the foreseeable future we expect that these will be the sales figures it gives you the base case an upper bound and a lower bound Okay, so for each point that you set, you can see if you like the worst case and then the best case scenario aside the base case, right? Now let's look at some options that we can use in this scenario. So I'll go back to my report and then use the format option and then go to more options, right? So normally this is present in the settings screen. So if I go all the way down here, Right. you realize that my forecast options are here so i'll scroll down so the first one you see is the option for the units okay so 
here by default it set it in points that's how come you saw 10 points over here if you don't want to do it in points and then you want to do it let's say by time year month all these options are here so as an example let's say i want to forecast into the next five years the shorter the forecast period the more realistic your values right so i'll set this to five years i also have the opportunity to determine the number of years after choosing years using the forecast length okay so i can let's do five years from this point right you can also choose to ignore the last period sometimes for accounting purposes you want to adjust that last period and all that so this is also possible and then you can set your seasonality so if i wanted to let's say forecast in months and then i know that christmas records high high sales i can put in some seasonalities and all those things to reflect what has happened in the past it also gives you your confidence interval usually 95 percent is more acceptable which is the default so you can set all these and then apply okay so when i apply you realize that at this point if i go back to my focus mode right i now have it in the next five years so this is 2025 this is 2026 2027 and so on i can come back to my report right and then go back to my format options go to forecast and even play with the forecast line okay so if i open my forecast options there's a forecast line here i can change the color so let's say i want this to be red i can do that Okay, I can change the style instead of a solid line. I can do a dashed or I can do a dotted. Okay, so all these are possible, right? So if this fits in your current report, of course, you can keep it as it is. So one advantage you have is that you can export this as an Excel file and then maybe further analyze it in Excel. And it brings you all the bounds, the upper and the lower bounds. So this is the visual that I used. So I'm going to go to the ellipsis, the options button here, click on it and you see the option to export data, right? So this is what is going to export it. So I'm going to save this as data for, okay? So this initially is going to come as a CSV file and I'm going to save this, right? So now let's go to Excel, open it and see how this looks. Okay, so here's my Excel file. I get this notification to convert the large numbers into scientific notation it's just because i'm moving from csv to the excel format i'll click to convert so if i convert now you realize that i have the original values okay for the most recent year 2023 and its actual values then in column e f and g i have the forecast value right the high bound values okay and the low bound values i have my earliest dates also here that i can use as a timeline right so if you look at these values we could also even create a chart here similar to what we had in power bi right so what i'm going to do is first i want to format these dates properly so i'll highlight control shift down control backspace control one and i have the option to format I want to keep this in the month year format. Okay, so I'll choose this one, MMMYY, and then I'll click OK. Okay, so the chart I want to create is to include the previous actual revenue and the forecasted values for the three scenarios. Okay, all the way to the end. Control Shift one to format properly. So I'll go in here, look for a recommended chart for this so i think a line chart will be appropriate okay so i'll choose this one okay and then i'll click ok so here you will notice that it looks similar we have our historical over here the green you see there is the high bound and this is the default forecast and then this blue here is the confidence low bound right now in a time series it use points to plot the x-axis so we can always change this i can select the chart go to chart design and then select data okay and then edit the horizontal axis so here i'll feed it the timeline okay so this is going to be my timeline and then click ok
it. So now I have something similar to what I created in Power BI. Okay, so I start all the way with my historical and then I have my forecast values, right? So this is a very useful feature. If you want to keep it in Power BI, you can keep the visual in there. But if you want to further explore, then you can always export to Excel and then do further analysis. Now for this to be very useful, it will be good if your historical data has a lot of previous years, okay, so that they can have a more reliable pattern to be able to predict your forecast years. For the forecast years to the shorter the forecast period, the more realistic the values, as I said earlier. Because you notice that as we go down the line, our lower bound value starts showing us some negative values and all that. Right. But in the end, forecasting is always useful, especially when you have good historical data. Always gives you an idea how your performance is going to be. So please practice, add it to your Power BI skills, and hopefully you can add some value to your reporting. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. If this video was helpful and you would like to receive more of these videos directly on your WhatsApp, you can send add to this WhatsApp number. We'll add you to our broadcast list so you receive our videos directly. You can also visit our YouTube channel Finest Skills Hub. All our old videos are here. Please subscribe for notification of new videos or connect with us on any of these social media handles. Thank you so much for watching.